This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. See how much you can save on your health coverage with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote at FBHP.com. From the Bet MGM Studios at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park with Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and look who's here. It's our old friend Charles Davis. It's game week. Woohoo! It's time for Charles Davis. Charles Davis and Paul Burmeister will call Titans at Bears this Saturday noon central time from soldier field are you ready to call a game oh we're very much ready to call a game but i do have to ask the home team gets to decide kickoff times correct it's kind of yes it, yes i, I mean but you the work visit, together visit, on it visitor have to assent to it or what have you i mean or? i would think they probably have to agree i think there's i'm sure there is a conversation at some point but i think think that the home team gets to kind of kind start of the it. conversation well, and, and if they said the game has to be at noon i don't think there's anything the titans could have done about right. it it's yeah. just generally the two coaches will discuss yeah a little bit what do you think about the noon start this saturday hate it hate it really hate it. it's august 12th right <laughs> it's 3027 degrees Not outside in the booth. yeah Ooh. it is too in Chicago? Yeah. Not a you, know, you, you know, it's not so much the booth itself. It's, it's just open. It, I mean, it's open. So it, whatever it is outside, it is in the booth. Well, yeah, I mean, it will be for us, you, too. You got the same thing. But we get know? home at a decent hour. That Okay, so there is a trade-off on it. But I, I will say this. I don't like afternoon kickoffs in preseason because of the fans. Well, that's for, true. For oh. the fans. I just can't imagine oh, okay. them being in the stands at that hour. Like, we've done it here. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when Coach Malarkey was here and we kicked off against the Panthers at like a 2 o'clock oh, or 1 o'clock. People loved it, too. Mm-hmm. And, Wrong. and it was 8 million degrees. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. and, nobody and, was happy. And, and Coach wanted to get him out because I think the season opener was going to be at that time. Mm-hmm. So he kicked off at that time and made the team wear their all blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dark blue. That was good. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Titans have a lot of noon games yeah. this season. So it makes sense from that like routine standpoint, getting what time you get up and eat what you're going to eat and, and get and to coaches the like stadium. That with routine and all. Yeah, now, you I, get to practice. I was reading, I was reading last night about different teams and schedules. So we'll get on to something else very quickly. The Houston Texans right now of 17 games, 16 are, the one o'clock Eastern kickoff, the mm-hmm. opening, the noon central, yeah. Which every coach in the league says that he wants. Like, they, mm-hmm. if if it were up to the coaches, mm-hmm. they would kick a Sunday at sure. noon, or noon or one o'clock, whatever that is, central or Eastern time, every single week because your routine stays the same. Yep. But if you're kicking 16 of 17 times, that means they don't think you're very good. That means you were picking mm-hmm. first. Right. Yeah. yeah. That things that are not going very well. You want to be like Kansas City. You want to be like Tennessee often. Is you want to have a jumble of games because that means people are interested. Because that means you're playing the 425. Sure. You're playing the Monday night. You're playing Thursday. You're playing Sunday. And the best teams know how to adjust. So anyway, I went off on that tangent simply because I'm going to be hot and sweating. And I don't think anyone else <laughs> out there cares. But you get to wear a golf shirt, don't you? Yeah, thank goodness. You it don't have good, to wear the old nice. suit. And it's a good-looking golf shirt, too. <laughs> I, I don't know if we'll be in, in, in that blue, but I like that blue. You we like the Titan blue? blue? I do love the Titan blue. I think it's just gorgeous. What do you and think about the up. Oilers uniforms that have come out? I'm fired up. I'm fired up for them because I like history. I like how it gets, it, it gets represented. I like how it gets remembered. And I like the fact that people will now truly understand the Oilers and the Titans are the history, not the Texans and the Oilers, because Mm -hmm. I think people make that mistake very often and understandably Houston being Houston, but it's the Oilers became the Titans and representing that history. Love you blue. I I might be up there singing. We're the Houston Oilers. You know who originally had that song? Who had it? So that song was sold to different teams. And and you hear it. The yes. Chargers uh-huh. used to use yes, it, too. Yes, they did, too. So who had it first was Miami. We're the Miami <laughs> Dolphins. No way. Really? Yes. It was not just exclusive to one team. I, I, Somebody had a pretty good idea. I discovered that the Chargers, I had a chargers Lion season opener, and all of a sudden the Chargers scored, and all of a sudden I'm hearing <laughs> saying, <laughs> yeah, but, Hold Wait a minute. minute. That's Houston song. San Diego Charger. And then, and then yeah. I found out, oh, okay, it was it was it was out there. It's kind of like watching um what was that cheerleading movie? 
Bring it on. Bring it, Bring it on. on. Yeah. Sure. Where the guy was selling the selling the routine all across the valley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. doing the exact same routine. Yeah. I had no idea. Syndication is a beautiful thing. It yeah. really is. All right. Charles Davis is with us on the OTP, and he is sitting right next to a giant jar of Snickers. You can My, have one. They, they are a sponsor. Minus one. Amy Wells. This is I co- pulled one early. Amy we- uh, I'm eating it. You're going to get a, have a bite of the Snickers on the show. The sponsor will them. love that. I will it, eat the it, entire it, thing throughout so the course Amy, of the show. Amy, I'm starving. Amy, I'm doing my Jerry Maguire. The <laughs> Snickers are coming with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you want me to ask a question while yeah, you take you, a bite? Yeah, you ask. I'm going to snack. Okay. <laughs> so you've seen this Titans team in practice. Yes. Um, thoughts, opinions, surprises? What I've seen so far is a team that the way things finished last year, anyone who thinks that that's the norm, better be careful. That's just not the norm. That's just not, that was just one of those, I don't know that anyone can truly explain how everything went at the end of last year. You can make explanations. That's just not the norm for them. This is a Mike Vrabel coach team, a brand new GM in Rand Carthon, who I think that they're going to jibe very well together because of philosophy, because of belief, how to put things together, and what they want out of a team. It's a team that has a very clear message of who they want to be and how they want to play. Yet where I think we're going to see some differences than maybe what we've seen in the past and how Tennessee is going to play, mainly based on personnel. And that's what good coaching is. What your personnel gives you, that's how you that dictates how you're going to play. Yeah, you have a philosophy. Yeah, you want to play a certain style. But if the players you have can't play that and you insist on playing it, then you're a lousy coach. <laughs> <laughs> the Titans don't have a lousy coach. No, they don't. The no, Titans no, have no, one of the best coaches yes. in the NFL, and that's not hyperbole. So they're going to go about it to fit the personnel. The way Traylon Burks has come back this, this offseason, I'm expecting big things from him, although how much we'll see him in the preseason remains to be seen. The sign of DeAndre Hopkins, of course, is big news, and he looks terrific. The offensive line was a question mark. It remains a question mark until we see them play. I don't know exactly what the coaches plan to do against Chicago this week, but it wouldn't surprise me if the offensive line, who are expected to be started, might actually get some work this week. You know, a lot of other offensive guys won't. They may actually have to get some work because offensive line is all about continuity. It's all about synchronicity. It's all about knowing what the person is doing next to you. And this offensive line hadn't played together. Did you eat the whole Snickers already? No, I just, um, <laughs> I'm more of a snacker, so it's like a bite, and then I will talk. Do you we'll have time to ask we'll a question to Charles <laughs> Davis before here? Before I eat another bite? Yes. yes. But, but Amy, but does Snickers satisfy? It sure does. There you so go. far. It there sure does. Yeah. Um, it, talking about the Titans offense <laughs> and how it looks a little we'll bit different. We'll talk about anything, won't we? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we're, this really, is, we're really we a chatty sell, bunch. We will sell anything, <laughs> we'll sell anything you want. Um, talking about that offense and how it's looking a little bit different, one of the uh, position groups that has stuck out to me over the course of the beginning of training camp, and I'd love to hear what you think about it, is that tight ends group yeah. and how they're being utilized a little bit more and a little bit differently. Has that struck you the same way that it struck me? Yeah, I believe that let's let's see if we're on the same eye line for this one okay the same spot we've seen this titans group with tight ends but there could be four tight ends on the roster and big strong physical guys obviously you want people to catch the ball we've seen the delaney walkers austin hooper was here to be one of those pass catchers but we also had people like jeff swain would just move people mm-hmm. that's what he was here for right and they would go three four deep to get that done I don't think we're going to get more than three on this roster. I don't see that. Um, Josh Wiley trying to come along. He's coming back from injury. My goodness, he's 6'7", but he moves well. And I will say this. I, I noticed this when he was in college. He knows how to bend and get down into a good hitting position to block people. Oftentimes, the taller player, the taller tight end, they struggle with that, and they become much more of a positional blocker where they, they use their hands and they move you that way. He can get down and get some pop and get some force. Um, I'm really excited about Chico Cronkwell. I just think that all the things we liked about him coming out of college, all things you saw coming into it, some of the explosive plays, I think there are going to be a lot more explosive plays to come. So I think there's probably going to be three. Trayvon Wesco is going to be interesting because he's large. Mm-hmm. He is a large human being in the old style of offense that we know that the Titans were going to run. He would have been an H-back, fullback, you know, tight end type player. 
I'm eager to see how they try and utilize him and deploy him going now because he will move people off the line of scrimmage, that's for sure. Charles Davis from CBS Sports and NFL Network and also a part of the Titans preseason broadcast team with none other than Paul Burmeister and Corey Curtis is our guest on the OTP. We need to remind you that it's official. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. That's right. The deal is finalized. And SeatGeek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, you haven't been listening to the OTP, so <laughs> what have you been doing? Anyway, <laughs> if you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot more this season, whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville. SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can... Fan. Oh, wow. Caught her with a mouthful of Snickers. Did you take another Snickers? Yeah. Oh, you caught that, huh? Mm-hmm. Look, your peripheral vision yes. is very you know good, what? sir. Guys. I thought while you were doing the read, that was a great time to go for it, and you just corner your eye. We got eye. a whole thing. But how does that, how do we get a whole jar of Snickers and it ends up on the opposite side from me. You want one? We can get well, you I one. Well, I got to talk. I'll be happy to pass I mean, one I'm to there, you. I may have one afterwards. Do we I'll get to guess how many are in there? <laughs> you can try. I don't know the answer, and I put them in I there. I would say three less. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying, nougat is so underrated. Nougat. Why don't we put nougat in more stuff? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is just really hitting all the spots for me. This is so good. <laughs> All right, let's get Please back. Please continue. Yeah, we'll go back to the OTP while Amy enjoys the Snickers. Nougat. Just l- I put this not on only just do we like have bread. N- not only do we have product placement. Mm. It says it right there. Peanuts, Nuh-uh. caramel. A nougat. nougat. Okay, that's good. Can we put more nougat it's in really stuff? It's really good. It's really good. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, so we have Charles <laughs> Davis on, and we're talking about nougat. I mean, which is great. No, he's into it. But give the people what they want. Give the people what they Very want. Very close to DeAndre Hopkins' nickname, Nuke. Nuke. Is he there it is? That's true. Nice trick. That's why he's... He gets paid the big bucks. (laughs) We're eating free Snickers. That's right. (laughs) Um, This defense for the Titans, and and I I mean, how we're going to see this weekend in Chicago, we don't know. But you look at Arden Key and Harold Landry, it's almost like they're two free agents pass rushing. Jeffrey Simmons and Danico Autry. Aziz Alshire at linebacker with Monty Rice. The five defensive back package consists of Byard and Hooker at the safety spots, uh, Murphy, Bunting, and Fulton at on the, the, corners, on, on outside. the outside. We're seeing McCrary play in the nickel, but he can also move back outside. And, and then uh, Elijah Molden there you go. is playing the nickel. He's playing safety. He's playing as the sixth defensive back in certain packages. So uh, am I getting too excited? No, I don't <laughs> think so. And, and the big... Uh, the big things I think that have to happen for what we see is potentially a very good defense. Landry back to form mm-hmm. and being able to rush the passer. I think Autry Simmons are going to do what they do, so that's not a real issue. Okay, that's They're going to be top performers, but Arden Key has got to be what we hoped he would be coming out of LSU. Okay, because remember, Arden Key coming out of LSU came after Daniil Hunter, Mm -hmm. okay, who signed recently with Minnesota. Remember, they were at contract. That was a big deal for Minnesota because Daniil Hunter came out of LSU with not great production in terms of numbers. But you saw him and he's like, God, this guy's bendy and silky. The numbers came in the NFL. I think Arden Key was drafted higher as a result of what we saw from Daniil Hunter. This is how this league works, as you guys well right. know. It, we see it. Oh, well, maybe we can get the same thing out of this guy. Oh, same school. We can pull this off. His numbers just haven't been there. But this is a place where the numbers can jump. But the biggest thing is if Landry's back being full speed and Arden Key is now providing pers- consistent pressure from the other side, the book ends take some of the pressure off of Landry. You can't put all your slide protection that way. You got to make sure that this guy doesn't get to the quarterback as well. Huge, huge deal if they're able to pull it off. Al Shire, the linebacker from San Francisco. Remember, he was the third re- third backer from San Francisco. The other two were pro bowlers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fred, they, Warner, Fred Warner's an all pro. Yeah. Dre Greenlaw is a pro bowler. Right. This guy can play, but he got lost in the shuffle. Now he gets a chance to be a featured performer. And I really like the secondary. But it all has to come together with one thing having to happen. Take the ball away. Right. Yep. We're going back to uh, – we go back to Cincinnati in the playoffs, at home, sack Joe Burrow 11 times, nine that count because there were two penalties, and never once did the ball come out. 
Right. Mm-hmm. Ever since that ball game, that's what Tennessee's been emphasizing. We got to, we got to, we got to. If they get much more of that, now you're dangerous again. Now you're you're doing the things that you need to get the ball back for the offense, give them opportunities, extra opportunities, I should say. But it's exciting to see that group of guys out it on is. defense. Yeah. And I'm really excited about Elijah Molden. Let me yeah. tell you why. Okay. <laughs> You guys probably remember how high I was on him coming out of college. So we haven't seen that him at that level. His rookie year, he played pretty well. I think the Cincinnati game hurt him a little bit. Last year, he was hurt, wasn't at the same level. But the ability of Tennessee to look at him and say, you know something, let's use you in a variety of roles, I think that works well for him. His game is based on instincts, being around the football, anticipating where it's going before it gets there. And it looks to me like in the two practices I've seen, He's a lot more confident player this year. He is around the football again. He knows where it's going, and he's there to help make a play. I think that's a good spot for him to be able to be more of a rover, safety, nickel, you know, corner, wherever you want to put him. I think that's a good spot for him. That secondary as a whole throughout the beginning of training camp has really looked like they've had more confidence just almost as a unit. They're playing harder. They're playing faster. They're moving around. And it seems like there's a level of confidence, even though for the most part, it's a fairly young group of guys. But they seem like they have elevated their game a little bit to meet some of the challenges that maybe they were experiencing at the end of the 22 season. And a lot of that was just due to injury. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I would think that Chris Harris coming in Mm -hmm. is a big deal for them as a new defensive backs coach. Different eyes, different voice, different way of doing things, but understand what they do well. Give them some confidence. I know this is a team that really likes guys who have something to prove. Mm -hmm. Sean Murphy bunting would sure like to get back to that level of the Super Bowl in Tampa where he was a monster in the playoffs and into the Super Bowl. He wants to get back and play at that level. Christian Fulton feels like people have continued to doubt him. He looks bigger, stronger, more explosive out on the corner. Um, Kevin Byard, we all know about the offseason contract, this and that. He's where he wants to be, but I'm sure he'd like to say, well, you know something, I'm pretty valuable here. Plus, he's the guy who leads that secondary. And Imani Hooker's just steady. I like this team. I like them a lot, and I like the way that they play with the cohesion. But the way Kevin Byard handled the offseason lets you know that there's a maturity back there that you're covered with. And I think that he feels, unlike I, was, I would go back to what, 2019, 2020, where maybe he won't admit it and I, he shouldn't, but he might not have trusted everyone to do their jobs the way they were supposed he to. He was trying mm-hmm. to do too much. And he was trying yeah. to do everyone right. else's in addition to his own. He mm-hmm. doesn't have to do that anymore. He hadn't had to do that the last couple of seasons, and he's back being Kevin Byard again. Interesting point. I want mm-hmm. you to go back to, to talk about Chris Harris for a second. Yeah. Comes over from Washington. Big time get for the defensive staff, which didn't have the massive shakeup the offensive right. staff did. But Mike Vrabel felt like he needed to change the voice in the secondary. What are they getting in Chris Harris? They're getting guy. Look, enthusiasm is always the first thing we always say. That's such a cliche. Oh, he's enthusiastic. Well, and you he played for Ron right. Zook, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's enthusiasm that's off the charts, right? You, there's no way you can you can rein that part in. But you're also getting a guy that has trained eyes, can look at what he's seeing, and now see these players in a different light because they've been judged by other people who may have seen them day in, day out. What's the old expression for us for the trees? Right. We can get lost in there a little bit. I know what he can do. I know what he can do. And sometimes you just see that even if it's not actually happening. And I'm not saying that's what happened with the previous coach, but sometimes that can happen with him. (laughs) Oh, well. I see you this way. I see you this way. I see this improvement needed. I see that improvement needed. I always remember the famous story when Mike Tomlin was a young secondary coach, and he goes to Tampa Bay, and he takes you know he takes over there. He's pretty young and the whole deal, and he calls John Lynch in and says, "Hey, here's some. I've been watching you on tape. Here's some things I want you to work on." And gave him a list of things, and John Lynch kind of walked out of. Who's this guy? John Lynch was an (laughs) all-pro, Pro Pro Bowl, eventual Hall of Fame safety. Just getting to know this young defensive backs coach. And he's admitted, you know, God, he kind of had it dialed in. And I once I got my ego out of the way, here we go. And he got better. I'm not saying that's what Chris Harris is doing, but I think there are some elements of that where he can come in and say, listen, you don't know me, I don't know you, but watching your play clinically without us knowing each other, this is what I see. And now if those guys are receptive, you can get better at it. 
Open a Titans checking account from Pinnacle with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August the 18th. And you could get two tickets to five Titans home games. It's pretty good. Or you could steal another Snickers like Charles Davis is doing right now. He's being so gentle with the lid, too. De- it's really just details nice. Details at TitansBanking.com. That's TitansBanking.com. Checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy, member FDIC. Charles Davis is with us. Uh, who's your first game? In C- with CBS? Yes. CBS. Cincinnati at Cleveland. Uh-oh. How about that? What if I told you Cleveland's my surprise team? I would I would uh, I would not be surprised. Uh, I would not nice be surprised. How you did that. Mm-hmm. It only because I feel the same way. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> feel the same way. It's a better roster than what people know. Yeah. Last year should be a mulligan year for them because their season was over as soon as Deshaun Watson's suspension was announced. As soon mm-hmm. as they said eleven games, we're done here. No offense to Jacoby Brissett, but the season went right there. You were kind of done because it wasn't a six game suspension where you say, "Okay, we hold the fort, get out of here Mm -hmm. three and three and see if we can get our quarterback back and go. You talk about 11 games. It was over. Yeah. By the time he got there. And the thing about an NFL suspension that some forget is you're gone. You're gone. You're, you're not, not in the, the building. building. You're not practicing. Yep. You're not in contact with the team in any you're way, done. shape, or form. Mm-hmm. And so he's coming in having not played in two years. And I know he played in the preseason. but That they, doesn't count. That doesn't count. But he's cold. Yes. And he looked cold. And then you started to see a couple of the moments like, okay, it's still in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's still and there. And they're good on defense. Really good on defense. And they changed coordinators. Now you have Jim Schwartz. So now – Miles Garrett, who is a beast to begin with, then they go out and make a deal and get Zadarius Harris. Okay, uh, is it? No, it's Zadarius Smith. Excuse me, Zadarius Smith, a terrific pass rusher in Green Bay and Minnesota. Now he comes to Cleveland. Guess what? Miles Garrett now has a bookend. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah! They thought they were getting that with Jadavian Clowney. They really didn't get exactly what they wanted. And Harris, excuse me, um, Smith has a great ability to work inside in those nickel and sub packages where he'll rush over the guards and use his quickness that way. Jim Schwartz coach defenses do one thing really well. They rush the pass. Heat it up. Mm-hmm. And, and how does he ask them to do it? Front four pressure. He wants his back seven to be able to cover, do other things. He's not a big blitzer. He's not all that. Titans fans know he's been here as a consultant. He's been here as a tremendous defensive coordinator. He still got it. Philadelphia. <laughs> well, we saw it last year in the Super Bowl. That's remnants of Jim Schwartz mm-hmm. watching him go, although they added a little more pressure from the backers. But if he can get that front four playing at that level, the back seven has great talent. Mm-hmm. That roster is way better than what people think. Offense, defense, and by the way, they didn't have a draft pick until the third round. Go back and look at their draft last year. And tell me you weren't, weren't impressed. I think that Andrew Barry, their GM, does a great job. People are talking about, is Kevin Stefanski on the hot seat as the head coach? I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. He's a good coach. I think, again, from the outside, maybe, but last year's a mulligan year. You're coaching a team that your quarterback that you paid all that money for isn't there. I think they've got a chance to be a surprise team, but they will have to prove that I believe three of their first four games are within their own division. Well, and the one that's not, Tennessee in week three. Mm-hmm. Yep. We go there in week three, and I think it's a very – I mean, you look at us. We go to New Orleans, and, y- I mean, Derek Carr is a quarterback. Mm-hmm. We know him. We've played against him. But what are they going to look like? They, they're trying to figure that I, out. Okay. Yeah. Well, and so then in week two, the Chargers come here, and they're really, really good. And after how they yeah. sort of went down the tubes in Jacksonville last year, you've got to figure they're going to be motivated. They only have the basketball team filled with wide receivers. Which mm-hmm. is, a, is a charger staple. Yeah. Has been for the last 10 years for receivers. And then we go to we go to Cleveland, and then, you know, Kansas. Uh, then Cincinnati comes yep. here on October 1st. So yep. tough first four for the Titans. It really is, and, and it's interesting. You've got Cleveland and Cincinnati so early. And the AFC North, from what I've seen in their schedules, they're playing a lot of their – division games early in the season against mm-hmm. each other. So trying to win your own division or focus on division games, how will they react outside of the division? That's going to be fun to watch and see how it goes. I, look, if you're an NFL fan, I think we all d- drew a sigh of relief when we saw the Joe Burrow when they said calf strain mm-hmm. as opposed to what we thought when we saw the video. Because when we first saw the video, 
Look like Achilles. It looked yep. like an Achilles. You know, mm-hmm. people were thinking ACL at first, but we realized, okay, ooh, that just looks bad. Thank goodness it's a calf strain. Although if you don't handle it right, it can linger all year long. But he should be okay. And as a football fan, I'm excited about that because you want to see the better players play. Sure. Absolutely. Charles, as you are getting ready for a football season, other than preparing for, obviously, the Tennessee Titans games, which you will be a part of for the entire preseason, <laughs> which we love, um, how do you kind of hone in, because you do so many different games and there's so much NFL news, the National Football League is a big <laughs> place and there's a lot going on. How do you know what to focus your brain on? How do you even process that? It's a great question, Amy. I'm not sure that I have the <laughs> true answer for it. <laughs> what I try to do is just take week to week and focus in that way. Mm-hmm. I feel like a true NFL player or coach right now, we just take them game by game. <laughs> oh, wow. We just take yeah. it week to week, play by play, day by day. Look, Right? Does that not sound like every press conference we've ever seen? Yes. At some point that rolls out. But it's the only way I can do it because otherwise I'm going to conflate things. I know people who are able to study and do extras along the way. Like if you know your schedule, they'll work on the first three games. I still only work on my season open. I know my first three. Mm-hmm. But I will do some surface stuff up until a certain point, probably about 10 days before the first game, and then it's all Cleveland and Cincinnati. And as soon as that game is over, on my flight home from Cleveland, I will start work. I have a book that I get of of articles and clippings and Mm. notes and all that that I will, on the plane, as soon as we take off, I start working on my second game. So I'll be working on Kansas City, Jacksonville, but nothing before then because I just can't bring it all in there I have a little bit of Winnie the Pooh brain, you know, <laughs> bear, bear of little brain. What little I have needs to be mm-hmm. focused on whatever is in front of me right at that moment. Your broadcast partner, Ian Eagle, has a hundred different things going on at yeah, the same time. he's unbelievable. How does he do it? I would love to know, and, and what I would really like to do is follow him around for about two weeks during all that time, but I don't know if I could keep up because he's doing an NBA game. <laughs> A national game. He's doing an NBA Brooklyn Nets game. He's doing a CBS NFL game, and then he's back to another one. And it's amazing, absolutely amazing. He has that ability, that, and the better ones that we know can do it. I would say we'd say that about the best play-by-play people we know. Compartmentalize and then bring it all out. I tell you, one of the people, Kenny Albert, if, you, if you're spending time with Kenny. Mm-hmm. Just a little, just to say mm-hmm. hello. Kenny's a cyborg. Okay, there's no <laughs> ifs, ands, or buts about it. The late, great Tony Siragusa had worked with Kenny all those years. Moose, Goose, and, and Kenny, right? Mm-hmm. That great team that they had. And I remember I was working with Goose on the one season we worked together. And he looked at me one day and he goes, so Charles, you know something? You're pretty good on this football thing. You, you, you know a lot of stuff. He said, but you know something? You're not Kenny Albert. And I was like, okay, I'm not trying to compete with Kenny. He goes, goes, Kenny's a cyborg. (laughs) And so, okay, cool. That's great, Goose, right? So I ended up working with Kenny. Now, this is stuck in my head. I'm a competitor. I was like, okay, we're going to tech. We're going to find this out, aren't we? We were were sitting in our room. You know, a lot of times you have a room that you're studying in Mm -hmm. at the hotel. (laughs) And baseball was on, baseball playoffs. And the guy gets hit by a pitch. And he gets hit in the foot, and they determine he gets first base. And so I pipe up with the old, well, you know, back in the old days, they would have grabbed the ball and looked to see if there was shoe polish on it. Because in the old days, everyone wore black shoes. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, if God would say, I got hit, and they say, you didn't get hit, they grabbed the ball. Oh, there's a smudge of shoe polish. First base. There you go. And so I thought, yeah, that's pretty good, right? Threw <laughs> that one out there. And Kenny goes, oh, yeah, it's like the 51 series with the Giants when Dusty Rhodes got hit by a pitch, and it changed the whole course of the series and the whole thing. And I knew this story, but he rolled it out so easily it's like, ah. Huh. So I grabbed my stuff, packed up. <laughs> night. And I went up to my room. And I stared at the ceiling all night. And I went, Goose, you're right. Kenny Albert's a cyborg. <laughs> 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 He's amazing. I mean, we did a we did a Green Bay New Orleans game and something really crazy happened. I can't remember exactly what it was. It's something that only happened once in two blue moons. And we end up documenting it and the whole thing. And we were, you know, getting information on it, blah, 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 and the whole thing gets put together. 
we roll it out. Kenny and I do it. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, great. There's my small contribution. Kenny's got it. And then at the end, Kenny goes into an extra. And then on top of it, the last time somebody named with the last letter Z played in the game, <laughs> I mean, just boom, 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 boom. And it all tied in perfectly to that. And he does that. And I punch into the truck. I say, hey, who fed Kenny that? And everybody's like, no one. Kenny just knew it. <gasps> That's Kenny Alfred. Wow. Wow. I have, as you can tell, my admiration for him is off the charts. And, you know, he's the best hockey guy going right now. Oh, he's now. fantastic. Yep. He's absolutely phenomenal. There isn't a thing he can't do. And if you ask him who he, you know, if you did the hockey game in the 1988 Olympics and Kenny did it and you said Czechoslovakia versus, you know, Sweden, who scored the winning goal? He said, oh, well, this guy scored the winning goal, but it was set up by and he would have all the extras. He's that good. Lars, wow. somebody or other. Yeah, he would have it yep. and probably know their hometown and, you know, where they came from. Well, you know why he's thing. so good? Huh. Because I'm sure he drinks a lot of Duncan and concentrates. <laughs> probably. Helps him his concentration probably. right to the brain. Yes, yep. exactly right. Hey, remember, Titans fans, it's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee and kick off the action. And it's perfect this Saturday because kickoff in Chicago is noon. It's a brunch game, if you will. So perfect for coffee. Drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching the game with Paul Burmeister, Charles Davis, and Corey Curtis at home locally on WKRN in Nashville. Yeah. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, like Paul Burmeister and <laughs> Charles Davis and Corey Curtis. We need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most impart important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football America runs on Duncan. And we'll be drinking iced coffee. On, iced coffee. On, on Saturday in the booth in Chicago. You know, they have really good, good iced coffee. Just a bit on the warm side. So there will be plenty of ice, but we will be Duncan. It will be Duncan, and we have Snickers. Charles has four Snickers. Amy has completed. <laughs> Amy has none. It is. Uh, it's gone. <laughs> This is a good sponsorship for them. I think this is going to work out. I think it's going to work out fine. Uh -huh. I'm Send all, more bars. I'm just going to tell you, I'm all in. And I didn't even know I was, I was a part even, of it, but I am in. You thought you were getting paid. Mm -hmm. Well, you are. Four I am all Congrats. in. Congratulations. Uh, look forward to seeing you in Chicago. Yes, can't wait to see you guys in Chicago. And congratulations to you guys getting ready for another Titan season. Here we go. Extra congratulations to you, young lady. Thank you. I'm so happy for you and your family. This is going to be wonderful. We yes. have our second beautiful Amy Wells child. Me do. We Add cannot her. wait for that. Add that her is to just the roster. Be great. And uh, babysitter extraordinaire sitting right here to your left. Calling you up. Every time you're in town, just you're obligated you know. to hit your quota call, of call babysitting the, hours. Call, call, call the reliever <laughs> in. Call the left-hander. <laughs> for Charles Davis and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP. We're on to Chicago. On to Chicago.